the church into false doctrine. And you listen to me, every one of you prosperity preachers. Jesus Christ did not die on a cross. He did not take the stripes on his back. He did not take a crown on his head. His side was not pierced that we may drive Rolls Royces and buy $12,000 dogs and live in $40 million homes, but he died on a cross to save mankind from the power of sin and the grip of darkness and shame on you, shame on you, shame on you. Man's problem is not what kind of suit he wears or what kind of house he lives in or what kind of house he dri- or car he drives. Man's problem is sin and man needs a savior and that savior is Jesus Christ. There must be a reformation of the cross. There must be a reformation of the cross. Oh, you're not getting it. I said there must be a reformation of the cross. The church must come back for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. The church must have a reformation of Christ and him crucified. I'm angry, I'm mad, I'm tired of God's people being fleeced. We, listen, you better hang on and buckle your seatbelts. We don't need any more prosperity pimps leading the church into spiritual idolatry. said we don't need any more prosperity pimps leading the church down a primrose path of destruction. We don't need any more snake oil salesmen. We need men of God who will stand behind a pulpit and preach the gospel. I'm going to say it again. If you're preaching that lie of the dream, you are a prosperity pimp. I said, if your gospel is the gospel of greed, you're a pos- prosperity pimp. And you're going to stand before God and give an account for every single message that you preached on that. Souls are dying and going to hell and you're prostituting the word of God. Men are bound by alcohol and you're prostituting the word of God. Homosexuals bound and dying in their sin and you're prostituting the gospel of Jesus Christ. Prosperity pimps. Let me tell you what's going on. And let me tell you what's going to happen. Jesus said, when he walked into the temple, my house shall be called a house of prayer, but you have made it a den of thieves. You are thieves. And I remind you what happened. He cleaned the place out. And he's going to clean the place out again. Your day is numbered. Your day is numbered. Your day is numbered. He's about ready to turn over those tables. He's about ready to throw you out. My house shall be called a house of prayer. Where people can get saved, not have success seminars. I'm sick and tired of preachers 
saying, we don't want Kmart Christians in this church. They, won't, they don't want you, but Jesus wants you. I don't care if you ain't got shoes on your feet. Jesus wants you. I don't care if you ain't got two dimes for your head. Jesus wants you. I don't care if you don't know where your next meal is coming from. Jesus wants you. Tonight are the preachers that will stand up and take a stand. Where are they? We need Jeremiah's. We need some Daniel's. We need some Isaiah's. We need some Jehoshaphat's. We need some David's. We need some Hezekiah's that says, I'm sick and tired of a dirty temple. It's time to clean it up. It's amazing. They say, give, give, give. And Jesus says, gave. You don't get it. They're telling you to give, and Jesus has already gave. Listen. The modern day greed gospel is nothing more than a Ponzi scheme. It's nothing more than you walking into a casino, dropping your coin in, and pulling the slot machine. Listen, when a preacher stands up and says, if you write a check for $1,000, your mortgage will be paid off and all your debt canceled, that's a lie. And somebody needs to get mad and say so. When a preacher tells you that if you will give so much that God has to give you so much in return, that's a lie. When a preacher stands up and says the blessing of Abraham is wealth, that is a lie. The blessing of Abraham is justification by faith. The Bible says, and Abraham, but he cut him under. Abraham. Abraham believed God and God accounted unto him for righteousness. When a preacher stands up and says Jesus was a billionaire wearing designer clothes, that is a lie. When a preacher stands up and says your healing is based on how much you give, that is is a lie. The Bible says, freely given, freely received. When God healed me of migraine headaches, when the doctor couldn't, Jesus didn't say, give me a thousand dollars and I'll think about it. He said, up with my stripes, you are healed. Now, Jesus does prosper. We believe in prosperity. And I will tell you what that prosperity is in a minute. The body of Christ is not a commodity or an article of commerce to be looted by a gospel of greed for preachers to make merchandise of When I stand before God, I'm going to have to answer the question, did I manipulate the people or did I preach the word? And this greed gospel is nothing more than manipulation. One preacher the other day 
walked up, held up his hands, talking about this diamond ring costs 40000 This diamond ring costs 70000 That is an abomination in the eyes of God. Let me tell you, you preachers are going to give an account for your $12,000 Dodge and your Rolls Royces. <laughs> we are selling Jesus. We are selling the King of Kings. And the Lord of Lords. We are selling Jesus Christ. The one who bore the stripes upon his back. Who took our punishment that we deserved. We are selling him at bargain basement prices. Now let's look at what Paul said. I've made half the world mad now. The Apostle Paul said this in verse 5. He used the word destitute. That word means that through selfish desires, they had departed from the truth. They were those who once knew the truth. They knew the message. But they turned their back from it. And the reason why they did it, because they believed that godliness was a means to financial gain. In other words, these prosperity pimps make religion a means of livelihood. They make their livelihood off of your hard sweat and labor. Oh, you didn't get it. Have you ever noticed the only ones driving the Rolls Royces are them and not you? Now, 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 now I, I believe a minister should be blessed because ministry is the hardest work in the world. Because what we say...